What's up, you guys? How are you all doing? I have returned for yet another recap of the UH men's basketball team. And as you can tell, I am very, very pleased right now, which can only mean one thing. But before I get to that, hey, I got to tell you guys, subscribe if you haven't. I appreciate it. I appreciate every single subscribe, every single subscriber that I get. I'm already over 10,500 and I want to make it to 10,600 and then go for 107, 108, 109 and so forth. And the only way I can do that is with your help. I got my channel remonetized on December 1st, 2023 and I want to be able to keep it. So so remember, subscribe and let's get into this thing. I'm going to put up my banner here. That's right. UH versus UC Riverside. UH sweeps Riverside in overtime 76 to 73. And I tell you this, year after year after year, I had been wondering what is it going to take to sweep these guys? And we finally did it. Now I'll tell you this, it wasn't necessarily the most cleanest game per se, but they definitely played a lot better than they did at UC Davis where they succumbed to a slow start and Davis led throughout. This time they hung with UC Riverside and although Riverside was the first to uncork uh, an early run, University of Hawaii managed to find ways to answer back, and I couldn't have been happier. Noel Coleman led the way with a whopping 31 points, okay? That's even better than T.Y. Johnson and Elijah Pepper did in the last matchup against UH because they both had 30. And I'll tell you this, you put Noel Coleman with 31 against them as well, we probably would have gotten a lot closer or it would have been a lot closer loss or maybe would we would have won by the skin of our teeth i don't know but hey life goes on and i'm glad we were able to split our final road trip you you also are you also can see in my in the description box down below my story that i wrote and this was a huge win not just for conference play but to prove that mentally we can take Riverside twice. Now, last season, we almost pulled off a win, a season sweep against UC Riverside. But unfortunately, in the whole matchup, we were leading by a good by a good margin. Then Kamaka Hepa got called for an offensive foul, and UH's game was ruined right after that. This year, it was flip-flopped. We faced off against Riverside first. We grabbed control. And we were able to turn back Riverside to the end. Now, I had picked UH for six-point favorites for the road contest at Riverside. And for a while, I thought that they were going to better my prediction because they were up by 10 at one point in the second half. But Riverside, you got to give that squad a lot of credit because they got guys like Barrington Hargress, Kyle Owens, uh, Neil Olabade, who was also a big problem for the University of Hawaii in this game. Olabade had seven. And there's another guy I'm there's another guy I'm trying to think of uh that also see I I, I had uh, Kyle Owens, I had Barrington Hargress. Um hold on, I also have the Final stats still up. Oh, Nate Pickens. That was the guy who led the – I forgot about him. Nate Pickens is the third guy. He led Riverside with 16. And uh, that's a squad you can't take lightly. You know, there was a time where I thought that Riverside was going to blow UH out of the water after they – got ahead by eight in the first half. But fortunately, University of Hawaii found a way. Noel Coleman, as I said, with 31. Bernardo Da Silva 
had uh, 16. Justin McCoy, 10. He had, uh, I think, six points late. And uh, and this one went down to the wire. And uh, UH, they led at the half, 36 to 30. And I thought, well, if they can, if they can uh, stay solid, there's no way that this thing should go to overtime. But it did. That's the only. Uh, that's the only. Uh, that's the only thing wrong I really saw with this game. I mean, you know, if we could have won this game in regulation, we had to play a lot more solid. But also, another thing of note: UC Riverside's lead scorer Isaiah Moses was unavailable for this game, so that certainly helped us out. And we've lost our fair share of guys. Javon McClanahan missed a, missed a few games. More sex out for the season with a knee injury. But still, we did great. And uh, But I got to tell you, that overtime period really told the story of how UH came out the winners. But if there's something that caused UC Riverside to come out the losers... It was two things, three-point shooting and free throws. Because Riverside, they averaged eight threes, eight triples a game. They were held to only five. They were eight for, or five for 18, I should say, Riverside was. And UH, on the other hand, seven for 21. And in terms of free throws, UH was way more steady at the free throw line, 11 for 14. Now, the only outlier is, at least in that department anyway, in my book, Riverside had 22 free throw attempts, and they made only 12. That's just under 50%, or just a little over 50%, I should say. They're 54 and a half. But still, there were times where, where they could not go they could not go two for two or make a, or if it was an and one, they would miss the additional free throw. And if you're a basketball team, you can't afford to miss your free throws. And, th and this game was solid proof how it can work against you. Now, another thing that this sweep did for the university of Hawaii, they managed to, as you can see on my banner with this win over UC Riverside, the university of Hawaii, has managed to sweep all of the Big West opponents. That's right. I'm talking about... Now, obviously, they didn't do that this season, but I'm talking about all time, okay? So that's other foes like Cal Poly, Bakersfield, CSUN, Santa Barbara, Fullerton. They've done it all. And I'll tell you this. They couldn't even get a season sweep over Nevada when they were in the whack because they could never win in Reno 12 times. They went to Reno when they were in the whack 12 times, they came away the losers. Now here's the thing. I was thinking that Riverside was a, getting a season sweep over Riverside was a similar problem that UH was having with trying to get a win in Reno. And it seemed like it was just a lot of bad luck or a bit of a mental thing, or it could have been a mix of both. I think it was a mix of both because UH was playing well. The closest that they got to winning in Nevada was 2007, but the refs would not honor a last second shot by PJ Owsley in 2007 or 2006, I should say. And that was a major case of injustice because it went through the netting before the clock hit zero, but the refs just did not want to honor the shot. But still, I am very, very pleased. I am so overjoyed that UH finally broke this jinx. And you talk about other jinxes in sports. I mean, Ricky Carmichael could never win Anaheim one and he never did. He also never won at Steel City until he did in 1999. And uh, for others, for other jinxes, um, Jeremy McGrath never won in Dallas again 
after 1996. And I got to tell you, but as far as basketball is concerned, that's like, I mean, if there were any jinxes going on, this was probably the one that was right at the top of the list, getting a season sweep over UC Riverside. And I couldn't have been happier because now it's safe to say that UH has done it all in the Big West. They won the tournament. They won a tournament. They won a tournament game. They won the tournament overall. They made it to the dance. They won the series. And now they can say that they swept every opponent. Because Riverside was the one that eluded them. So I'm so proud of them. I would definitely give that game probably a B plus, mainly because I think they could have won in regulation had they just played a little bit more solid and not gone through a couple of lapses every now and then. Or they had one lapse here and then and then one lapse there uh, about seven or eight minutes later. But still, they played solid. And although only six guys total scored points for UH with uh, Noel Coleman leading the way, Noel Coleman was the guy who really came through with a lot of clutch shots and a lot of clutch three-point shots. He made five triples overall. He made 13 baskets overall as well. And, of course, in contrast, Bernardo Da Silva, he was 8 for 15 from the field. Or as in contrast, Nate Pickens, he was 7 for 14 to lead Riverside. Barrington Hargress, 5 for 15. And holding him down was also key as well. Because in the home matchup, Hargress had 18 points. And I really thought that he really put Javon McClanahan and Juan Munoz through the ringer in terms of their point guard abilities. If you saw, if you saw my recap from the home matchup for UC Riverside. So, you know what? Quick turnaround. We return to the – so the team will return to the Islands for their last homestand. That's a Wednesday-Saturday game against CSUN. Uh, Wednesday-Saturday homestand. Wednesday against CSUN. Saturday against Cal State Bakersfield. And there is another softball tournament, and I will be at those games. I actually took a slight hiatus after the Ole Miss game for, for – uh, for UH softball because I wanted to kind of wait for a uh, basketball to uh, have a lot, a little bit lighter load and not, and not do write-ups, not tr and try not to do two write-ups in one, but you will see some more softball B roll as the year goes on. We're only a couple months away from ending UH athletics for the, until the summertime. So, I think that this team is going to do something special in the Big West tournament the, the, for UH men's basketball. Take my word on that because they've turned a corner. They convinced me after the Davis game. And I'll tell you this, Santa Barbara was just a bump in the road, and so was UC Davis at Davis at the University Credit Union Center because they, no, they had no answer for T.Y. Johnson and Elijah Pepper both scoring 30. But still, I am so proud of this team. I'm proud to be a Rainbow Warrior fan and a part of the media, having gone to these games for 27 years, at least the home games anyway. But still, season is winding down. I'm actually kind of sorry that it is winding down. Not going to lie to you. So anyway, guys, that's all for today. And remember, subscribe, and I will see you all for those final two recaps. You will see some more shots from the Long Beach State game until Wednesday night when they play against uh, CSUN. You'll see a prediction video later this later in the week. And for that, I'll see you all soon, everyone. Malama Pono. Malama Pono. Take care, everyone.